So, you want to join the thumb? Well... Do you like guns? Do you like mafia movies? Do you like offensive dice? Do you like strict rules? And will you respect my authority? Then welcome to the family. If I were to betray the secret of our way of life... If I were to betray the secret of our way of life... May my soul burn in hell, just like this saint. May my soul burn in hell, just like this saint. Amico Nostra. Gentlemen, I give you our new friend. One of the Five Fingers, the most powerful syndicates in the city that is labeled as a star of the city threat, who rule over the back streets, holding sufficient influence that rivals that of the wings, and will potentially overthrow them given enough time. The Thumb takes their inspiration from the Sicilian Mafia in our world, with them having a strict hierarchy with the Capo di Capi, leader of the faction, followed by the most powerful to least, Soto Capo, Capo, and the Soldatos. One must obey their superiors and respect the rules and their orders, or they will not survive. Failure to do so results in a payment made in blood. From the least severe, it's your hand being cut off, all the way to death to atone for that transgression. While severe, this is to maintain orders within their ranks. The Thumb will forcefully subjugate lesser rank gangs like the Kurokomo clan and the Night Owls to increase their power and control over the back streets. Though for us, they are more familiar with using their unique arsenal of guns to demonstrate why people must follow the rules. They don't shoot them off willy-nilly, gets rather expensive using that many rounds. Adapting to this stupid cost, they use bayonets and buttstocks as their primary form of fighting, making their rifles extremely formidable in close range and long range combat, giving them the advantage in battle. Within the story of Library of Ruina, the Thumb Syndicate and L Corporation have been struggling to maintain their turf against multiple different factions, with the Library being the strongest. Desperate to seize control, they invade the library to claim its power and solidify the district as theirs. Deploying their capos and underboss to take control, and yet, they were swiftly defeated. Thereby giving Angela, and Vidu us, the player, the power to start her own mafia within the library. With that, it's time to learn the way of the gun. This is my boomstick! To join our ranks, you must understand ammunition. Ammunition are singles-use, zero-cost cards that can be used as is or discarded to apply their effects on all range attacks. They come in three types. They are flame ammunition, frost ammunition, and armor-piercing ammunition. All three of them have a random chance of being made through a couple of ways. The first way to make them is with their passive ammo supply. After every three successful attacks with melee combat pages, add a random ammunition to hand. This is more so a supplementary way of generating their bullets, but still every little bit helps to get more into hand. The primary way is through two exclusive combat cards, Reload and Bayonet Charge, for guaranteed ammunition when the card is used. This is the bread and butter for getting ammunition into hand. With that, there are two different options to use said ammunition. You have the simple and atrocious way of chucking a bullet at them to get their on-hit effects, or the Chad way of using ammunition as ammo for shooting. By discarding mass amounts of ammo, will allow all range attacks afterwards to gain their effects. So if I discard four flame bolts, all of my range attacks this turn will inflict eight burn per hit. A massive improvement compared to flicking a single shell at someone. You're going to be using all three bullets, but some bullets are made better than others. The best to worst are frost, armor piercing, and last place, Flame. Frost will inflict one paralysis and one disarm next scene, making the enemy always have worse rolls, especially if they run defensive dice. The paralysis goes a long way to making clashing against them easier, and we can sustain it with our relentless shooting. Armor piercing while clashing. Reduce the power of enemy dice by one. Though we have used gun attacks to go in for one-sided attacks, we can now actually clash because of the good dice rolls and these bullets. Finally, there is Flame, with inflicting 2 burn per hit effect. This is here for dealing additional damage and getting a kill off sooner. Though, it can be used to support a burn team with the passive burn stacks while inflicting debuffs. Though all three of them serve the same purpose, 
to be used with the thumb's unique ranged combat pages to gain secondary effects. To get started in the mob, you must first join the associates in order to become a soldier. However, Angela makes soldiers by killing already made men. Whoever gets chosen by her gets the Thumb Soldato. They have A6 HP and 45 stagger resistance with a 2 to 6 speed range. They have normal resistances to everything and have access to speed, rifles, and the ammo supply passives. There are a total of 4 key pages. These are the only grunts in Star of the City that don't have resistances to anything, making them more squishy and easier to be staggered. However, the access to a gun shouldn't be underestimated, due to them getting to make the first move at the start of the scene. Wonder if Lowai was supposed to join the thumb. He had the right idea compared to his full stop employees. On to the combat cards. These guys have some class shown with class and respect. Okay, but you also have to learn how to act properly in the outside world blend in. Yes. A one cost page with the non-use effect of restoring two light. It comes with a 4 to 8 slash die with the on hit effect of inflicting two bleed. This card is a better cleanup since Kurokomo clan was their subsidiary. It's natural they have a better copy. This is the thumbs only form of light recovery. Since it's a one cost it is less likely to be discarded due to their discard effects hitting the lowest cost cards. How will they ruin their perfect reputation with an act like this? Before firing the gun, one must reload. A one cost page with the on use effect of creating an ammunition in hand, then draw one page. It comes with a 3 to 7 pierce and a 2 to 7 blunt die. This is the thumb's main draw engine. It allows them to start cycling through their deck while generating ammunition for their unique range pages. Do note reload will generate ammo and then draw. So if the hand size is close to full, you will be stuck with the bullet instead of a card from your deck. The dice rolls are decent for a one cost page, but are not likely to win a clash. Use it in a one sided attack to start gaining stacks on the ammo supply passive. You don't want to be firing at someone with an empty magazine. Their other ammo generating card is Bayonet Combat. Bayonet! A two cost page with the on use effect of generating two random ammunition. Bringing a lead 3 to 7 block die due to the art, followed by a 5 to 7 blunt and a 4 to 6 pierce die. This is the thumbs only defensive exclusive card, but you primarily bring it for ammo generation. Bringing the lead block die allows them to tank a singular attack and get two free hits for their bullet generation. So you may be able to get three bullets because of the passive. The two additional bullets help out early on when there's none in hand. Unlike reload, it has better rolls, so they can clash against other pages. Though, it comes at the cost of not being able to cycle through the deck. Run it if you want more ammo immediately for their unique shooting mechanics. That bayonet will make them think twice of being an only range combat user. Also, how do they generate two ammunition? Do they loot the corpse for bullets or take two out of the gun? Or am I thinking too hard into it? Their first card that uses this newly acquired ammunition is... Suppressive fire! It's a shot, fool! A one cost page with the on use effect of discarding the lowest cost page and, if it was ammo, all offensive dice on this page gain one power. With a 4 to 8 pierce die with the on hit effect of inflicting one bleed next scene, followed by a 4 to 7 blunt die. Project Moon realizing discard is falling off and needs new cards to deal with the power. Quickly, make the thumb deck a discard deck. Suppressing Shot is the cheapest of the thumb's discards. Unlike other range attacks, all thumb range pages will not exhaust, allowing the card to be used multiple times in a reception. For applications for this card, it's really hard to use because the other two are vastly better. Maybe use it as an early game tempo card, but even then, there's better cards to play for your light. I really would like to hear your guys' take on this. The next combat card is rather shocking with Shock Rounds. A two cost page with the on use effect of discard the two lowest cost cards, then draw a card. For each ammo discarded, gain plus one power. It has a 5 to 10 blunt die with the on hit effect of inflicting 3 stagger damage followed by a 5 to 7 pierce dice. This is the thumb's second drawing card. It cycles through the deck and declogs ammo while boosting the power of the card. 
The lead die is great for winning clashes, and the stagger damage is the cherry on top for getting enemies closer to being staggered for a free kill. Unlike Suppressing Shot, it can fire two ammunition and stack more power and ammunition effects. If the card wasn't bugged, it will always gain the first power up, but not the second. It is bad coding, but there is a mod to fix it in case it matters to you. Even without that, this is still an insane card and will always leave the enemies shell-shocked. The final card the Thumb Soldato receives is Focus Fire! They really don't like that one guy. Probably talk bad about the underboss. Anywho, it's a 3 cost range page with the on use effect of discarding up to 4 zero cost pages from hand. If any were ammo, increase this page power by the amount of ammo discarded. With a massive 7 to 17 pierce die with the on hit effect of inflicting one fragile next scene, followed up by a 4 to 8 pierce die. Feeling overburdened by ammo, this card clears the hand of it. Unlike the other shooting pages, this card looks for zero cost cards in hand and not the lowest. Keeping one plus card safe and allowing for follow up plays for next turn. Having that massive lead die allows them to outclass strong singular melee attacks. This also doubles up on dealing with very strong individual mass attacks. Where the lead die is usually the strongest. The Fragile is a nice bonus, but the main benefit is discarding 4 ammo first and using any range attack afterwards to reap in the bonuses. With the soldiers done for, it's time to go over their superiors. The Capos are Dennis, Boris, and Catriel, following the orders of the underboss, Kalo. Small detail with the reception, only the highest member will talk and all the other soldatos will stay silent due to their hierarchy. Starring with the doorman and the odd thumb out, Boris, the enactor of discipline. He comes with 90 HP and 50 stagger resistance with a 2 to 6 speed range. He is resistant to blunt HP and to pierce stagger, though he has higher effective stats due to his passive grit. Whenever he gets hit, he reduces the amount of damage and stagger damage taken by one. This will also affect statuses like bleed, burn, and fairy, as well as self-staggering effects like pinpoint breakthrough. This keeps him alive a lot longer than what most people can take. Certain floors can take advantage of it by losing clashes and farming negative emotion coins while still staying alive after all that. He gets even better in his guard duty with some of the cards coming up. Time to make his guard duty a lot better with Ferocious Guard, a one cost page with a 3 to 8 followed by a 3 to 7 block die, ending it with a 2 to 5 slash die. Good light value for a block focused deck and keeps him alive even longer. Main use is to redirect damage from the higher ups while still staying alive to do it all over again, but easier after the shooting starts. This is the guy you want guarding you, willing to die for the rest of the teammates to live. As great of a defender he is, he isn't letting those assassins walk away without dying. Time to strap on the Steel Knuckles, a 2 cost page with the on use effect of drawing a card. It has a 4 to 8 followed by a 3 to 7 blunt roll with a 2 to 6 slash counter die. How is he slashing with a blunt weapon? Does he carry a switchblade for dealing with other attacks? Manly guy that uses brass knuckles in this crazy city and he carries a switchblade. Anywho. Amazing draw for blunt decks and for any solo strategy. Due to how prevalent it is in the game, let me explain. For solo builds, it's the cheapest combat page in the game that draws a card and holds a counter die. It beats out Gale Kick because Ske Steel Knuckles has two dice and therefore scales better with strength. Even if you're not doing solos, it is greatly boosted from blunt focus decks who love having a cheaper draw option. They can use the counter die to have more emotion coins gained. However, for Boris himself, it does go against his ultimate attack, Discipline. A 4 cost page with the unique neutral effect of, dice on this page and the page clashing with it are unaffected by power gain or loss. With a 2 to 6 and 4 to 8 lead block die, followed by that switchblade 3 to 5 slash attack, and finally, a 3 to 7 blunt die that is rolled three times. 
Let's just get this out of the way. Your favorite power enhancers will not work. Boris aspires to go away from the meta and make the enemy also follow his rules. The true Chad in Library of Ruina. What does work is anything unrelated to power directly. Smoke increases the damage dealt for a faster kill, doesn't increase dice power, paralysis to make enemy dice rolls a whole lot worse and win those clashes, offensive up to, you guess it, it deals more damage, and any passive that affects damage like the classic punch to the solar plexus. A combination of these skills can easily do over 100 damage in the right conditions, mainly used against Zhao since it deletes one seventh of her total HP and makes her be honest about her bullshit mechanic. Even without any other statuses, the two block dies will reduce the damage he takes and potentially stagger the enemy, which allows him to go in for four uncontested attacks. Unless he decides to perform a one side attack, then just don't. He prefers to fight someone mano on mano. Boris is a great inclusion on smoke teams, rush down a boss, or protect the mob in order to get the guns rolling. Speaking of boomsticks, we got three new gun users. The first one we receive is Dennis, Mr. Sharp Teeth Man. A better thumb soldato with a HP slash resistance and the passive additional supplies. Every three times ammo is exhausted, a random ammo is added to hand. Now spending ammo gives more ammo. This works on discard or on use, so there is additional flexibility. Just don't use it on use, please, pray please. As great as this passive is, it can clog the hand, preventing Dennis from drawing options to get rid of the massive influx of ammo. At which point, he will have to start using single shots to unclog the hand, and he very well may still be clogged afterwards. Include a single focus fire to prevent this problem from happening. Up next is Catriel, the intelligence gatherer. Her key page is a better soldato by having an HP endure pierce and the passive empowered first shot. Every time she uses a range page, the first attack gains one power. It's only there to get over the first offensive die easier, but the thumb already have very strong pages, so it's eh. Though with her, it's more thumb key pages to use, which is great. Also, if you have a thing for losing your tongue, you'll play her a lot more. Finally, the leader of this faction we can play as, Underboss Callow. He isn't the godfather of Elcorp, but I suspect he will be in Limbus. Anywho, he's an object de arte key page with a 3 to 6 speed range, as well as double endured to blunt damage. He is also one of the first characters to have 4 base light and speed 3. With speed 3, he can have up to 4 speed dice at once. He also has two other passives. The first being the boss's orders, giving one protection to two random allies each scene, as well as three full tenacity. Every third offensive dice gains one power. Starting with the fourth scene, all offensive dice gain one power instead. Also not in the passives, but he uses a pistol to show how much of a badass he is. Oh boy, he doesn't disappoint. He provides protection every scene, making chip damage a lot more bearable and keeping everyone's HP nice and high. Though I'm probably overselling it, but I love protection. While giving a defensive bonus, it allows him time to get 3 full tenacity power boost online. The boost keeps track of offensive dice, so single attack cards will contribute to it by 1, but multiple offensive dice can get main procs off of it. It then upgrades to fervor after 4 scenes, allowing him to scale with all those offensive dice. However, in multiple act fights, 3 full tenacity will keep resetting and needs the 4 turns in order to get the full effect off. On top of that, with Ford's speed dice slots, he has the potential to do an insane bullet discard on hit effect shenanigans. Why do I see him using Solemn Lament? It's not going to do anything to Agalia. Oh god, that's a lot of burn. He is the best thumb user by far, and I recommend putting additional supplies on him. Finally, they bring two more combat cards for Angela to play with. For all the named gun thumb users, they gain access to Summary Judgment. Wait, why is there a gun in the art being used properly, but it's a melee page? I see this is what will happen in Limbus Company. It's a two cost page with an on use effect of discarding the lowest cost card for plus one power for offensive dice on this page. It has a three to seven lead evade, followed by a three to six slash die, and a whopping five to ten pierce attack. 
This is a very weird page. Since it's melee, the discard ammunition effect won't give the rain pages the additional bullet effects. However, it will provide space in the hand in order to allow drawing a card, provided it doesn't also create a bullet with the on hits. The average evade die could be used to get back stagger, but it's far better at getting rid of enemy evade dice. You can also use this die defensively by going in for a one side attack and then have the evade die recycle in order to defend yourself from enemy one side attack. The offensive dice are good, especially while boosted, but the big die at the end is somewhat wasteful. It's preferable to clash earlier with it in order to get a stagger off and clash, so the weaker slash die would deal more damage, but that isn't the case for this card. Run by choice, or if someone has a very annoying Vade Daily, this card is great. Even though this card is mixed, it's amazing for lore reasons with only the Cathos having access to it. Due to them being higher than the soldiers, they can execute someone below them who are not following the rules, which is why it's exclusive to them. Also, all three of them have different animations, with some being good, some being deranged, and some being badass. Finally, there's the Thumb's unique card, Le Regole, an object in our combat page that isn't Thumb exclusive, but can only be farmed from Kalo, so technically it is. It's a 3 cost page with Kalo in the center being a Chad. It has the on use effect of all allies deal plus 2 damage with their offensive dice next scene. It comes with a 5 to 11 pierce, followed by a 5 to 11 slash die, and an amazing 3 to 8 block counter die. This is the big brother to the use rushdown combat card, giving everyone the plus 2 damage effect, including the user, for only 2 more light is a steal. For the thumb and their shooting attacks, they can kill someone with this deadly combo before the enemy can even move. Though where it really shines is in a smoke team, since they want to finish the fight as quickly as possible. Its main niche is in bosses that can kill you very quickly, the main ones being Zhao and Silent Girl, where they make the fight a lot more manageable. The two offensive dice will win clashes and the counter block die allows the user to tank a one sided attack while continuing to be on the offensive. Farm this page, even though it takes a while and is only needed in certain boss fights. But. How do I play the thumb? <laughs> guns, guns, guns! The thumb's general strategy is to quickly get ammo into hand to unleash devastating range attacks. Usually, they will start an act with reload and bayonet charge or shock rounds to get their hand set up. After a brief delay, they are free to unleash hell winning the majority of their clashes due to the increased power the range pages now have. However, that isn't their only way of opening. You could go out of the gate swinging with 3 attack melee cards like Faint to trigger ammo supply to get their ammo or two. This is usually paired with the overpowered blind fire and snipe to also win the clash against those enemies and quickly turning the fight into a 4v5 while still getting set up. Now after a barrage of gunfire, the thumb user debilitates the enemy by applying paralysis, disarm, and clash power down, making them unable to counterattack. While doing this, it allows other teammates to get in on the fun of destroying debilitated enemies. Though as great as they are, they do come with some problems. If a reception drags on too long, their hands can get clogged with bullets and no way of discarding them. Creating an annoying lull in the fight where you're desperately trying to empty the hand to get to your discard cards. Then die. Ugh. On top of that, they're rather vulnerable to mass attacks. Not so much individual, but some mation attacks will absolutely demolish their shooting attacks. Due to them not getting the increased power from the discard effect because it's an on use and mass attacks avoid that. Finally, their light recovery isn't great. Losing access to zero cost recovery hurts them a lot in the late game. Even with those downsides, they are a great addition on any team. With the thumb being a discard deck, might as well include all the discard bonuses. Bottom deal for more page draw, stacking the deck for light regen, even though there is only one copy, best choice for the insane healing, do not take margin, and in times like these, due to ammo generation preventing the hand from emptying, and the strength gain being minimal at this stage of the game. Other good attributes are the haulers and keeping in stride for survivability. 
the first turn passives to get ammo and numbers advantage, singular strike in case we run out of cards and have nothing but ammo in hand, though at that point what the hell happened. We also have a lot of power gain options available. Fervor due to all the cards are offensive and will help in multiple act receptions. Pierce or Blunt enhance power, preferably Pierce since there are a lot more piercing attacks than Blunt. Reindeer Treatment, since you'll take a lot of HP damage due to the lack of resistances, and being able to heal it up with best choice to get free strength. Solidarity, since gun builds work very well in groups, and if you're at one person living, you're going to lose. Any of the many burn passives work well due to the flame bullets. Improv Drumming for fragile stacking. Pierce and Blunt stagger damage effects to stagger people faster. And finally, Mirage, Hawkeye, and remain vigilant in peace for free stagger and protection options to make up for their lack of stagger resistances. Here are the decks, with the first one being the most common option, and the second one being a little bit more spicier, but the thumb is usually locked into these two decks. Finally, here are some floors that work well with thumb members. When ammunition is discarded, they affect all range attacks after they are used. This include ego attacks like Solemn Lament, Fragments from Somewhere, and Swords Sharpened by Teardrops. More used for decreasing the enemy power while clashing. Any floor with early power gains like Look of the Day, Pulsation, and Courage to increase their strength. They can be used to support Gabura to make her start easier. And finally, Tipperath's All is Void to exhaust all the bullets at once and get a lot of free strength and endurance while still having a deck to play with afterwards. With that, you are now a member of the Thumb and ready to kick some ass.